Today's Still Maze Warrior partner is Jabo Superfoods. We want to take the time to thank them for the offer that we provided during this episode and for teaming up with the podcast to provide a better listening experience for you. You can find out more about Jabo Superfoods at www.jambosuperfoods.com or by visiting stillmazewarrior.com. What's up, Still Mace Warriors? Here we are again, another podcast. I still can't believe how long um, I've been doing this, and I'm just always so grateful to have um, such amazing guests on here. Um, just overall, I want to also mention, before we get into it, um, this month's podcast partner, which is Jambo Superfoods. You can get 10% off if you use Jambo or SMW Jambo on checkout. Um, I want you guys to go check them out. They have really great like CBD balms and stuff like that. So if you mace, it's great if you're like sore or something. Um, they also have, you know, CBD oils and stuff like that. But let's get into this uh, podcast episode. I'm actually really excited over this one because um, this one is we are going to talk to a physical therapist, a doctor, about the mace. So that's freaking interesting. And I'm not, I haven't had a guest like this before, so we can actually dig real deep on that. So I have Dr. Joey Cadena. He's a physical therapist. He's a seventh degree black belt Kempo, still mace flow certified coach, um, owner of Physio Sports Institute, and he is the creator of the Primal Flow Training Maze, which we're going to talk about, which is actually interesting. It's a wooden maze, guys, and it's light, and it's, it's amazing. So I'm definitely going to tap into that. So Dr. Joey, tell me, tell me your story. Like, how did you, like, get into all of this? I mean, obviously, your story is going to be amazing. And then kind of, like, what led you to the maze? And, like, I'm really interested to know what your reaction was when you first saw Mace. Yeah. So, hey, I'm so honored. What an amazing intro. I mean, that sounds really cool. Yeah. And I'm really, really honored to be part of the podcast. Um, so it's kind of a long story, a roundabout way that I found my way to the Mace, but it's also sort of a natural progression. Um, I started really training at 17 uh, in martial arts. Uh, before that, I was always a fan of the movies, you know, Bruce Lee, who's not a fan of Bruce Lee, right. often movement or martial arts, or if you breathe air, everybody likes Bruce Lee. And um, another one that I thought at the time was so cool and still do was the Highlander. Did you ever see the Highlander? Mm -hmm. the, the swords and like the immortals and they're fighting with swords. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people have seen that, but no, I'm not familiar with it. So, you know, that was one of the big ones that got me into martial arts and wanted to learn to move like that. And uh, they integrated a lot of martial arts with sword play. And it was just such a really cool show at the time and movies. And um, that kind of piqued my interest. Uh, I got out of high school and I was active in everything. And then you get out of school and you're like, well, what do I do now? I have all this free time that you're in college and you could either, you know, go into junk food and you know be unhealthy or in my case i found martial arts and it was uh it was something i always wanted to do so i started studying um jeet kune do which is bruce lee's art and uh it really really was intriguing to me it was such a free uh moving art where you would do some boxing we did some you know stick we did different weapons and it, it was really awesome um and that led me into american kenpo as I wanted to learn a little bit more structured movement, uh, American Kenpo was one that came across my plate and had such a great marriage with Jeet Kune Do that uh, the arts were complementary, and I, I dived early into that one. Um, as I moved away for school and everything, it was easier to train in Kenpo with my instructors. Um, and that led to where I started my journey into fitness. Uh, I was competing on the circuit and, uh, in self-defense and um, I wanted to get better at my competitions, so I said I need to learn how to train smarter. I need to learn how to eat better, and uh, let this apply to my martial arts. So I started a program with the International Sports Science Association. Um, I want to say that was like in '99, um, and I went through their program and got certified as a fitness trainer. Started using it on myself and started training my clients that were with me at the time in martial arts. Uh, at that point, I was a black belt, and we had. Uh, three schools. I was training people who were competing. Wow. And uh, the fitness training became a really uh, a huge love that I didn't know I even had was exercise performance and sports nutrition. Um, so fast forward about a year or two and I'm training on the international circuit. Uh, I was blessed to have won um, three internationals in self-defense. Wow. And 
I'm in California training and I blow out my knee. I literally um, had been training all week long with uh, the senior grandmaster of American Kenpo. He's like the guru, the godfather of Kenpo, uh, senior grandmaster Chuck Sullivan. Uh, he was the fourth black belt in the U.S. and wow. uh, really a pioneer in the whole martial arts system. He knew Bruce Lee. I mean, it was an honor. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. And uh, I had been training there for about three or four days uh, with them. And I decided to go one more time. Like we were going to fly out the next day. Class was going to start. And I said uh, to my wife, let's go train one more time with uh, Grandmaster Chuck. You know, who knows what uh, other information I can get. And we were across town and she's like, you know, we had a good training session. We should probably just chill. We're, we're, we're kind of far from class. I'm like, no, 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 let's go, let's go. <laughs> she says, okay. So we book it across LA. We get to the studio. The class had already started their warm up. They were starting some drills. And I just jumped in, on, you know, not warmed up. And I blew out my entire knee. I kicked mm. cold. I just didn't quite loosen up right. And I, my leg buckled, dislocated it, tore. My MCL tore the meniscus. Uh, I, I mean, I went big. <laughs> wow. wow. And uh, that led to this huge sidetrack of like, oh, man, what do I do now? Um, I had just come off a winning streak, and I was doing so well, and I had commercial studios, and I, was, I had a small gym, and how in the world, what am I going to do? Yeah. So I went yeah. from top of the world to I can't even walk with a crutch, you know? And uh, through a little process back and forth with surgery and about a year of recovery, I, I found a passion for physical therapy, which was truly became out of my own need saying, I want to get back to where I was before. I don't know enough as a fitness trainer. I knew a lot to get to a certain point, but when you're injured and you're like, what do I do now? Yeah. And uh, it was tough. It was a scary process. And I said, there's got to be a lot of athletes out there like me in this situation that their whole world was taken from them. And uh, I want to give that back for myself, but I want to give that back to other people. So wow. uh, a good friend of mine that was a trainer, he was getting ready for medical school. He was studying prereqs for uh, med school. And he said, why don't you go into physical therapy? I mean, you really love strength training. Why don't you go into PT? You should check it out. So that evening I go online and I see, what do I need to do? I have a bachelor's degree what do I need to do to go into PT school? And I, I had about a year or more of prereqs to take. And I said, well, I really want to do this. And my wife said, if you want to do this, you know, go for it, whatever you need. Well, I'll yes. help you out. And uh, fast forward 10 years of PT school. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I thought it's that long. Well, yeah. See, here's what's crazy, right? You know, and I think this kind of leads into my crazy world, but so at the time, this was in 2005, uh, 2006 PT was a master's degree and I, and I had a bachelor's and I took a year of prereqs that I was lacking to qualify for that bachelor's degree. I mean the master's degree. Uh, so it took me a year to get those, uh, prereqs down and then I get into PT school and I thought, okay, cool. Two years I'm out. I'm going to be a PT and I get there and, uh, they bring in guest instructors and people like that to lecture. And this one guy comes in, uh, Dr. Peter Kroon, who became a huge mentor of mine. He's a specialist in orthopedics, but this guy is like this amazing, amazingly talented manual therapist that does joint manipulation and they know all about biomechanics. And he, they brought in an athlete from Texas State who had been injured. She had crutches and she had some hip pain. And during his demonstration of an exam, he walked through her tests. He checked her out. He found out what was wrong, showed us how to determine that. And he manipulates her spine and he manipulates her hip. And then she walks out carrying her crutches with no pain. Wow. That's, that's insane. Exactly, that's what I said. I was like, dang, I didn't even know that could be PT. Like, what is this? So I talked to him afterwards and said, Dr. Kroon, I want to know what, you know, I want to do what you just did. And he, he laughs and he says, well, this is a fellowship program. There's another two and a half years after school and you do 400 hours of residency and it'll get you the knowledge. So I said, all right, well, I'm not done with school till I finished that program. I just put my mindset, like, yeah, I yeah. want to get there. So I uh, start going through, I graduate, start getting into this program, going through that. Well, in that time frame, PT became doctorate nationwide. And so that added a whole other year to the DPT program. And uh, I thought, well, 
I'm kind of new as the last master's degree PTs and all these people coming out from now on are going to be doctorate. I don't want to be 10 years down the line, the only guy with a master's degree. What if things change and you have to be doctored? Right. Uh, so I'm going back. <laughs> so uh, luckily uh, the state board and everybody knew that. So they offered these transitional programs where you, if you already had your master's, you could just go back for that last year. And you could do a part-time, which meant you did it in two years, but you could work at the same time. So I did that and, and got my doctorate in PT. Uh, so that's where the whole amount of crazy years took uh, to get to the point where I'm at. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it was great because along the way, I met some amazing uh, people that form what I do now. You know, Dr. Kroon with the biomechanics and the manual therapy, uh, the martial arts background with the strength training. And then I met another mentor that we'll talk about, Dr. Shirley Sarman. And she was the lead of orthopedics at uh, George Washington University. She wrote a ton of books and she's been on all kinds of committees and she still uh, lectures worldwide. Wow. And her knowledge is on biomechanics and really studying human motion. And that formed the whole basis of what I do uh, today. So it went from an injury, you know, to like this huge long journey of discovery. Yeah. And, and continuing to train in martial arts along the way. Um, so that, that's, that's what led me up to strength training. And then I guess about a year and a half ago, I found the mace. Mm, now we're getting to the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where we're going, that roundabout journey. Uh, before that, I was doing Spartan Race. Uh, I went through Spartan Race coaching certification. So I'm working with athletes. And I fell in love with functional tra training. My, my original background was, you know, traditional bodybuilding, strength training, you know, heavyweights, barbells, great stuff. I love yeah, it. Yeah. I still do that. But Spartan Race introduced me to animal flow and Spartan Race introduced me to body weight training and this new way to train. And so I got to diving in. Okay, well, sandbags are cool. Kettlebells are cool. Animal flow is cool. And as I'm surfing around on all this stuff on YouTube or whatever to find more info, here comes leo savage on steel mace right you know you know how the they'll say you, you might also like or like related searches or whatever and i see this guy looking like some kind of ninja master flow sword like i don't even know how to describe it when i first saw it i said what is that <laughs> i think <laughs> everyone's reaction to leo is exactly that yeah and so i mean that goes all the way back to the young kid uh into bruce lee and then the sword with the Highlander. So they use a Japanese katana through that whole show. And here he's swinging this thing around like a katana, but he's mm -hmm. moving like Bruce Lee. And I said, whoa, it like lit up the little kid in me. Like, what is that? I want to <laughs> do that. So of course I look on that link, I look at his profile, start watching the videos and say, dang, I need to get one of these steel maces. Um, and I order my first mace and uh, I get it in and I, I, I think, well, I did Kenpo. I did the sticks with the Filipino Kali sticks and staff. I should just flow right in with this tool. Right. Because you've done like almost a bunch of martial arts before yeah. it and it's similar. It looks similar, yeah. right? Yeah. At this point, I was 20 plus years in martial arts and, you know, strength training and heavy barbell work and kettlebell and stuff. So I thought this is going to be an awesome transition. And I open up the box with the mace and it's like, I didn't have any arms on me. Like, what the heck? <laughs> How does this thing feel? This is 10 pounds. I checked the label. Like this can't be 10 pounds. <laughs> you know, you get a 30 pound kettlebell to warm up with and you go up to, you know, 70 or 80 pound kettlebell or something. Uh, how does this 10 pound mace feel like this? This makes no sense. Right. And so I start to do some of the movements I see Leo do. And I start to do some of the movements I learned in Kenpo, like some of the staff stuff. And I'm toast. Like in, five minutes yep. and uh, immediately fell in love and immediately felt humbled. Like I am a complete beginner yet. I have this movement background and I'm, I'm a strength athlete and I'm a Spartan race. But I can do monkey bars and all kinds of stuff. And I can't do this 10 pound tool. Right. This is crazy. So that's kind of where uh, the journey began. I started using YouTube a lot, figuring out how to move this thing trying different stuff. And uh, I, I was booked for a class in, in uh, physical therapy to renew my license. You have to do so many hours every two years. So I was going up to Austin to do a class with Dr. Sarman. And I said, well, man, I'm going through Austin. Let me instant message Leo 
and yes. see if I can book a private lesson with him. I want to learn more. I had already developed some skills. I had some movements I felt was pretty good. So I contacted him and he says, yeah, definitely. Let's book a session. So we meet out at Zilker Park in Austin. And uh, two hours later, I have completely, he ignited a whole passion for steel mace in me. That was a whole other level. He, he really fine tuned. I was so blown away at his knowledge of human movement. Uh, I've, I've been blessed to train with, you know, Bruce Lee's right hand man, Daniel Santo in seminars and uh, like senior grandmaster Chuck Sullivan. These are people with 50 plus years in movement and martial arts. And he had that same understanding of the human body and how to use it and how to manipulate the steel maze that these master gurus had that were like older than he was. Right. They've been in the martial yeah. art older than he is old. And, uh, I, I was so impressed by the ability to use the mace to correct human movement that started my mind of it. At first it was a training tool for me. It was a fun thing, right, but now right. I started to go, I think I can use this in the clinic. I have a, I, I see all sports orthopedics, but I also see some of the elderly just straight orthopedic patients. And I thought this would be a great tool for my shoulder patients. This, some of these moves would be so awesome for hip and back pain. So I started on that premise and I said, I'm going to use it with some of the patients that really, really know me that I feel very comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And I can tell them like, look, I'm going to try something really new on you, but I really feel I've been doing it myself. I think it's going to do very well for you to correct your hip issue or your shoulder. Cause it's been helping me, even though I don't have an injury, I feel like I'm improving my motion. So let's use it as part of your therapy along with your regular exercises. And they were cool about it. They're, yeah, that sounds awesome. You know, so they started using the mace and I found, okay, the 10 pounds a bit heavy. So I go online and I buy the, the five and the seven pound. Right. And they're too short and they don't have the same extension. Yes. Yeah. And so I said, oh man, um, I'm still going to use them, but I need to figure this out. So we kind of working on that back and forth and um, I end up going to this class. So zooming back again, uh, the Highlander being one of my favorite influences on martial arts. I found, um, I was watching, we were binge watching one time on Amazon and uh, the Highlander pops up the TV show. Like you might like this. I'm like, Oh man, I've <laughs> this since I was a kid. So we started watching the Highlander and uh, I, I go online and I say, what is this? Uh, Adrian Paul, the main actor, what's he doing now? Like, does he have an Instagram page or what? And I find that he's actually, um, teaching the sword all over the world. Wow. Uh, and I'm like, are you kidding me? I can learn the sword from the Highlander. Like that would be the most ultimate bucket listing ever. Right. So um, turns out he had one not too far from where I live. Uh, well, that's back. perfect. Right. It's I mean, like meant to be <laughs> meant to be exactly. Uh, it, it felt like the most, I mean, what are the odds? You know, you log in. Oh, wow. He's teaching the sword. What? He's coming within uh, 50 miles of me. I'm going. So I go to the class. And uh, of course, when you learn with a sword, you use a wooden sword. And uh, I were going through the movements. And I was like, oh, it was so cool. He was a great teacher. It, it's called the Sword Experience. Throw a little plug to him there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'm going to have to look it up afterwards. Like totally look 100%. it up. Um, it's called the Sword Experience. He basically goes all over the world. And he teaches the foundation movements of the Japanese sword. But then for the rest of the workout, he choreographs like a fight scene with a partner. And you actually use the basics you learn and you make like this fight scene. And he's a director. So he makes like a mini movie out of your experience. It's wow, so cool. that sounds like something you just want to try. <laughs> yeah, it was totally fun. And it, it was for any level. And you can take it to your own level. And he grouped people up by experience. He could tell you had experience, so these people would work out together. So, uh, but that for, that's where the aha moment came, right? Uh, after the class, I was super pumped, and I had my steel mace with me. You know, I was working out in the the, the hotel, and uh, I thought a wooden mace. Mm -hmm. There's got to be one. I never looked up wooden mace. I looked up steel mace. There's got to be one I can get for therapy. The slider, just like we learned the sword with this lighter wooden sword, we're not using a, a sharp metal sword. So I go online and there's nothing. I start try, typing different tools, like different search 
uh, keywords and I can't find anything. So I say, uh, there's not a wooden mace out there. We need to make one. I mean, if there was one, it wasn't mass produced and it's really not readily available. So right. I, I immediately got my wheels turning and I said, I want to make one. A wooden replica, just like the wooden sword replicates the katana. A wooden replica of the steel mace. So I had an intern that was with me uh, for physical therapy school. You have to do all of these internship hours before you get into PT school. And she happened to show me uh, some furniture her dad made like, hey, uh, look at this. It, my dad made these really beautiful shelves and stuff for my, my dorm room. And just so happened, I remembered that. So I texted her a picture of my steel mace and I said, do you think your dad can make one of these out of wood? And she texts back and she says, absolutely. I mean, this guy makes some beautiful furniture. It would be nothing for him to do. And so I said, oh man, I got to meet with him. Um, so that following weekend, we got back home, went over to their place, saw his wood shop. He's incredibly talented. And I take the steel mace and I say, uh, I want to make this out of wood exactly to the proportion of the 10 pound mace, the size, everything. So uh, we go to the drawing board. We start looking at different woods. I go to different shop. Okay, is it oak? Is it going to be, you know, what are we going to use? Because at that point, you know, it becomes, is it, is it readily available? Is it too expensive? Mm. Is, it, is it durable? And then how do we make a freaking ball? Like, okay. So <laughs> I, I think research. that was going to be my question. Like, how the hell do you guys make a round ball out of wood? Like, that, that bobbles my mind. I'm like, how do you yeah, do that? So That's crazy. It's a specialized skill for woodsmith. Uh, they okay. use call the lathe. It's like the spinning tool they make the table legs out of and stuff like that. Oh, okay. So with a specific tool and, and of course, the skill to do it, you can make these balls. Or you can make a ball. You can make all kinds of stuff. So, but he doesn't do that. And the, oh man, okay, that's a hiccup. Um, so I just started searching online. I call different wood shop places that supply, and I get hooked up with some guy in Maine that's a woodsmith, and he makes balls for Tai Chi, huh? different size, different weights to use in Tai Chi. And uh, I talk to him and say, look, I'm trying to make this project. I really need this one part. Can you make it for me? Uh, as we went through all the woods, we found that maple was the best readily available, kind of hard, dense wood. It's kind of like a baseball bat and it's, it's hard, you know, it's durability. I said, so can you make it in maple? Oh yeah, I can make it. it. Gives me a good price point. So now we have the wood guy that can make our handles. And then we have the guy across the country that can make the ball. <laughs> and uh, we'll go to town on uh, making some prototypes and we fine tune where the little grip pattern goes. and all that kind of stuff and primal flow training maces is born sometime. Uh, I don't remember when it was. Yeah, October. I was going to ask you like the time frame, like how long yeah. did the process take? Was this like a couple of months or did yeah. it take like a year? Like it took a couple of months because yeah. I think pieces came so quickly together. It was meant to be. Yeah. Uh, it's like, Oh yeah, I know a woodsmith because I remember that one conversation with my intern <laughs> and then I start making some calls and this person uh, at like this big company that sells wood supplies says, Oh, well I have a guy that we, we book for certain things. He's over in Maine. Let me give you his number. <laughs> I mean, it was like needles in the haystack that were, I would say impossible came through and uh, it all clicked. Um, so I yeah. think I, that's it's a good like, sign right there. Yeah. It, there's yeah. so many things uh, around PT and around this that have happened like that, that you can't, you can't deny that, you know, God had a power of like putting these things together because I think it was so meant to be yes. uh, all the way back from the injury to the Highlander TV show to the class mm -hmm. to the right intern to here's this wooden mace now that we've sold worldwide. And I've seen amazing results uh, in the clinic with. So it took a few months and it took about three prototypes before we got one that I felt was producible to where we can do it in small batches, ship them out and not cost so much. And I'm really happy with the process we've got to right now. And that was how Primal Flow was born. Uh, and uh, all that time I started Leo's uh, Steel Mace Flow certification program. And right, started, which that recently came out too, in case someone's listening, you guys should go yeah. check that out. It's amazing. Oh man, and I can tell you that that month long internship you do with him on the online one, is so powerful because he does these zoom calls like this one-on-one -on -one. you work on with the group then you have your videos and your curriculum 
so it was such a formative thing to get my mind going on movement patterns and ways that I can adapt it to physical therapy. And so using that and using what I learned from Dr. Sarman, um, I wrote a course. I, right now I'm kind of calling it Primal Flow Mace Movement. Um, but it got accredited by the ISSA for coaches and then got accredited by the PT board for physical therapists. I'm about 90% done with the, the ebook that'll go with the course, but it'll also Ooh. be a standalone. Yeah. I, and, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm super excited about that. Like when I saw that on your Instagram, I'm like, I got to fucking take that. Cause that nice. sounds like incredible. And, and it, it's going to be one of those things that, uh, I, I would have wanted as someone who found the mace on YouTube going, okay, what do I do with this? Right? So it takes kind of like, it's almost like a segue into what coach Leo is doing. He's taking everybody to the next level and he's, you're learning all these flows and becoming certified. What I'm trying to do with the steel mace book or the book that I'm doing in the course, actually, it's going to be by body region. It's going to be like, okay, the, the neck and shoulder frequently have these muscle imbalances these are the corrective movements within steel mace flow foundation that will correct these. Wow. And so there's uh, we took like two, 300 pictures and there'll be photos from point A to point B. This is how you do, for instance, you know, a rotated uppercut, keeping a good standing structure, your core is engaged, you apply anti-rotation with your hips, rotate through. And so the pictures will show what to do. It'll explain it. It'll tell you a little bit about what muscles are stimulated by that movement. And then it'll give you a sample workout at the bottom. So to do this. Oh, wow. I'm getting more excited. I'm getting a little hot over here. That sounds amazing. Oh, right. wow. And, and then I, I, one of the things that I noticed too, obviously you just mentioned, you know, you got it approved by ISSA. So mm -hmm. that in itself tells me how good your course is. Uh, I mean, to get approved, right? I mean, there's a process for that. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, my wife, uh, she writes courses for a living. She she has a doctorate in education. I know. Perfect. Again, Perfect. <laughs> going back to the whole like stuff flows, right? So um, awesome. Yeah, you know when when I, I started with the course, I said uh, I want to make this an accredited course. I'll do it in house. I really love to travel. It'll be a fun way to travel. It's a half day class. Uh, so she says, well, that's, and I knew, I mean, that's what I do. I'll write the course curriculum objectives, everything for you. Give me the content. I'll write the course shell and how it should all settle together. So we teamed up. She wrote all the objectives the stuff that they review to give it accreditation. Uh, I put in the content and then uh, we submitted it and it was immediately approved, which was so awesome. And uh, wow. so now I'm actually that's... fleshing out the material of the course. Uh, thanks. Yeah. It's, Dynamic duo, you know, what a great team. Uh, she's keeping me on course on how the, the, the class should flow. And then I'm putting in the material, we're fleshing out the content, and then the manual will be the actual material so the participants can walk away with their ebook. Uh, if it's a clinical setting, they can have the primal flow training mace as part of their class. I mean, we're setting all this up. We're really, really set to launch it during the Paleo Effects weekend, the conference in Austin. Right. Uh, okay. We're going to be at Paleo Effects uh, this year, and we're going to be out there at the Adventure Deck with our uh, Primal Flow Maces and with our uh, training book, and uh, we'll be doing sample movements. We're, uh, the, the, the developers of Paleo Effects loved our idea when we applied for a booth, and they said, we'll put you right by an area where there's some grassy, like a little park area, so you can take people to try out your maze, you can take them to sample your movements. And uh, that's where I really want to take home the, you know, put out the course and say, this is the ebook. We'll have a few printed copies, uh, you know, spiral bound or something just for the people who want a physical copy. Uh, and I think at that point we'll be ready to unveil like the class and be ready for bookings. But it's really for anybody who wants to take their steel mace foundation to the next level. Uh, anybody who wants to learn how the mace corrects common movement impairments and, uh, basically build a foundation and then I leave it up to where they want to go with it. You know, there's not great instructors out there that are taking it to another level. Uh, so I'll say, you know, if you want to learn flow, you can go to coach Leo and go through his steel mace flow certification. I've given you the foundation of movement. I've given you the understanding of the tool. And to me as a PT, that's where I'm happy, right? I'm, I'm restoring movement. I'm yes. giving people that gift and then I'm setting them free to let them express themselves with what they have or go further in their journey. And that's kind of what I wanted to do with the course.
See, and I think that's what I was going to ask too. Do you recommend they take your course first or do you recommend they take Leo's or like, how does that work? Yeah, cool. So if somebody's completely new to the mace, it's a great starting point. It's a little bit, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit more of an entry level. I take it move by move, foundation by foundation. And he's got that. So if you go through his course, the video series, the beginning set of videos puts you through the foundation work, right? Mm -hmm. But what this is doing is this is taking a little bit more in depth. This is something you can read. I'm explaining the different muscles that work together. So if the person's like a a coach and they want to have a little deeper understanding on how it is, it's another way to go about getting that knowledge. Or this might be a great one for someone who works out in the gym and wants to add steel mace to their workouts but doesn't want to do like the free flow style movement. They're not quite sure they want that yet. So this is the foundation. And then from there, you, they'll go like, oh, I really love these 360s. I really love this stuff. I want to do this or that, right? Uh, right. So it's kind of like, a, I want to say, an intro to the Steel Maze that can, found, that can flow into any other program. Fantastic. I'm super excited over that. And I hope that um, you kind of give us a little hint, hint of when – yeah. When is this going to come? I mean, obviously you're saving it for the paleo, you know, event, but like kind of hints, like when you think this, this is going to go live. Yes. Uh, it'll go live uh, mid April. Um, absolutely has to go live by the 26th okay. when paleo Fex is on Okay. and uh, under the gun on my end to get it out before that. That would be so awesome. I had anticipated actually having it out before that, but with uh, my clinical practice, I'm transitioning into some operating software. and I've got all kinds of ownership, you know, adulting things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, that kind of sidetracked my progress on the ebook, but we're wrapping that up really closely and pretty soon. So uh, I'm going to hit that hard. Um, we're also trying to fabricate at least 50 maces to have on sale there at Paleo Effects, and we're mm-hmm. almost there. So that also pushed kind of spread my time out all uh, right but right. yeah absolutely so our, our website will have in our and my instagram i frequently update uh we'll have like hey we're live now click on the link in the bio okay so that's where i'll really shout it out off the rooftops like yes it's finally out I'm, okay you know. cool i'm so excited now these are going to be physical workshops right are you, do you ever plan mm-hmm. to have it online yeah um they're definitely going to be physical workshops uh, I love, you know, getting out there with people, uh, but my wife does design online classes. I mean, that was her so job. So maybe a future thing. So I would love to have like an online module where you're able to go through the course material. And so that would be something that would be wonderfully fun to add to. Uh, in the meantime, going out like grassroots and traveling and going to yes. the clinics would be so fun to actually have hands-on, you know, training and teaching. Uh, so that's where it's going to start. But it's going to absolutely online is a platform that is very familiar to me. And my wife does this for a living, uh, authoring classes. So it's only a natural progression that will put an online component to it. Right on. Okay. So do you have kind of like uh, an idea of where you're going to travel to? I'm waiting right now. I'll go anywhere people will go. <laughs> All right. Right on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I definitely want to bring you down to Arizona then because. Wait. Let's do to it. have that down here. Yeah. All right. That'd be so fun. That'd be so fun. Right on. So, okay. So let's just talk about like the physical therapy just to end it. Like, uh, you know, using the mace and physical therapy, like, have you seen improvement in people? Have it actually like. So, yeah. So it's so cool because at first it was like, okay, these are longtime patients. They're athletes. I train, they know me, they trust me. I start them with the maze. They start to get good results. Then we developed the training maze. And the first level of training maces we got, they were weighing about two pounds. Uh, then I was able to get them up to about four pounds as we tweak the model, the design, the wood. So I have the really light ones in my clinic. And I even have like 85-year-old patients that have like shoulder osteoarthritis. And they have, you know, neck, bone spurs, you know, cervical herniations and things like that. Wow. And we'll sit them down on a plyo box and we'll have them do rotated movements with a 20, you know, a two pound training mace. And here's this 80 year old light up like a samurai warrior going, yes. I like this, right? Because, 
a lot of times you either get someone that young or old they'll say I don't really like to exercise I've been to the gyms before and I'm not a big fan of lifting weights and I say well I have a really cool tool I think you'll love and it's not your traditional exercise and 99.9 of them percent of them say this was cool like uh, you see them light up when they start to do some of the mace movements um, so I'll do some foundation things like uppercuts and bow, the bow and arrow and uh, some presses with some rotation and they're either standing or they're sitting on a plyo box if there if balance is an issue uh, if there are you know regular uh, functional athletes they'll be doing them in standing and will incorporate the different lunges and uh, you immediately see increased mobility you see increased core recruitment balance I mean I've had awesome success with people who typically the shoulder blade gets glued down right so our modern society we're on our phone we're on our keyboard we're on tv and we don't raise our arms up high yes. so our shoulder blade stops upwardly rotating it's stuck, it gets stuck it, and there's some pec muscle tightness your serratus muscle gets weak there's these imbalances that come out and um uh, after a while you get shoulder impingement you can tear your rotator cuff there's different after effects of this posture issue that most people have well insert a mace and what you do now is that bar of the mace has to recruit equal movement on both sides the offset weight distribution even on our training maces we we're able to fabricate the mace to have it have that offset pendulum effect mm -hmm. and now they have to recruit muscles and you can key which muscles you want to recruit on by what side the globe's on right. and they're doing rotated uppercuts so they're doing like a rotated press and uh, the shoulder blade starts to move. The bar controls their path of motion. And uh, immediately you're getting improved serratus muscle recruitment. You're getting scapular upward rotation mobilized because both hands are kind of pushing through that mobility. And their mm -hmm. core is engaged. Their posture improves because they have to use good posture to rotate the, the handle around their body. And uh, what I couldn't do with the TheraBand or a dumbbell or anything else in the clinic, a kettlebell, I'm stimulating with a mace and I'll get somebody easily 10 to 20 degrees of range of motion in a couple of sessions just by the mace mobility. Wow. It's, it's, it's mind blowing. Uh, yeah. and, and it gives people an avenue that is not the traditional gym environment. They're yeah. not getting dumbbell and going, ah, oh, I did this at, you know, whatever gym and I, I didn't like it or I got hurt when I lifted this last time when I was in the gym. So this is something that's not familiar. So you have like a ground zero moment with them. They're, you're on complete blank slate and you're giving them something brand new and it's fun, it's empowering. And all my staff learn to use the movements and all their foundation work. So they work out alongside the patient and show the movements as I walk around and oversee the thing. And uh, it's, it's, it's empowering. Um, the side lateral lunges with the, with the bow and arrow or power row, you get improved adductor flexibility you know the single leg stuff like the tree stance with the bow and arrow uh, that helps with foot strength and balance so my runners are using it to get better at running you know I have uh, all kinds of profiles and they're all benefiting from it and so that's what's making up my steel mace flow class um, I end up winning people over they're like I love this tool oh well I teach a class on Saturday mornings come learn more and uh, with my steel mace flow class, now I get about 12 to 15 people there every week. Uh, wow. Sometimes more. It's pretty fun. Yes. Uh, and they're, they've gone from patient to warrior uh, by the steel mace. Wow. Wow. I'm like really impressed by all of this. I think this is like the first time where I've said, wow, probably like, I'm going to like recount like how many yeah. times I said it, but I really did say, wow, a lot of this episode because uh, it's, it's it's awesome, dude. You're like totally introducing like a whole new side to the mace, in my opinion. I feel the same way. I, I feel the same way. It went from something novel where it got me back to my martial arts roots to meeting, you know, Leo and really, really the mentorship he gave me during the certification program and even the one-on-one -on -one workouts uh, to applying it to patients and then taking people to the next level on their own and seeing people transform because of the mace. Uh, it's, it's been an incredible journey and, and in a short time too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm just, again, I'm just impressed by all of this. 
Well, I mean, I think I've asked everything I wanted to ask. I mean, I didn't even ask. I just let you talk <laughs> through it. I mean, and you just hit all the marks. Um, cool. Now, so, so where do people find you? Where do people find you for, you know, I guess break it down because you have so many things going on. So just. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the main one, of course, is uh, our website is primalflowmovement.com, um, Primal Flow Movement. And we have basically our product line there and a little bit of background info. What is updated regularly is uh, my Instagram page. And we have several. Uh, the Dr. Joey PT Instagram is going to be the main one. I primarily upload stuff to my own personal journey, my own personal workouts and things like that. And then we have Primal Flow Mace Movement as an Instagram as well. And that kind of more highlights the products and information. But honestly, I like dual post. I just hit post to both. <laughs> and so if you follow Dr. Joey PT, you get a little bit more of the personal side to it. And you get a little bit more of like seeing some of the workouts I'm doing. I'm integrating the mace, my own mace practice with uh, the barbell and with the kettlebell and you know, standard HIIT training. And uh, on Primal Flow Mace Movement, you'll see more of the information towards the wooden mace and things like that. Um, I have an email. It's contactprimalflow at gmail.com. Okay. And that's definitely available for, for people who have questions, but probably the fastest turnaround time would be Instagram. I check that pretty regularly. I, I'm just a big fan of uh, all the things you can find there. And it's, it's a great place to actually where I met you. <laughs> right, right. Where I met you. That's so cool. Yeah. I, I saw your Instagram and I was like, I gotta, I gotta have this guy on the podcast, right. like hands down. Okay, cool. And then for the, for the actual course, which one yeah. should they follow? Um, Dr. Joey PT or Primal okay. Flow Mace Movement, I'm absolutely going to shout it everywhere I can once it's up and live okay. and because I'm so excited. I mean, I've been blessed to teach martial arts seminars and classes and I've guest lectured at universities and things. So I, I'm a solid, solid uh, course instructor and uh, I've been armed with great information through the Mace Flow certification. So I'm ready to put that out there to the world. I've seen it firsthand on myself and my patients. And I, I really can't wait to share that with Mace artists out there. Um, I think it's going to be an amazing, I just know it's going to be an amazing course for people. And it's going to introduce a lot of people to Steel Mace. I'll tell you right now, it's, everything you're doing is going to be an absolute, like, hit. Nice. Hit. All right. Okay, thank well, you. thank you so much for saying yes, for being on the podcast. I totally appreciate it. Um, I'm always just so grateful, I guess, for people always saying yes to me. I mean... It's, it is, I mean, it's the reason why I'm here, you know, still doing a bunch of podcast episodes. Well, you're doing a great thing. I mean, you really are doing an amazing thing with your podcast, uh, getting it out there to the world. I share it with my class saying, hey, guys, check this podcast out. The ones that really start to get into Steel Maze. Uh, oh, and wow. Thank you so much in what you're doing. So I'm honored to be as a guest uh, on, your, on your show. Right on. Okay. It was such an honor. Okay. So like I always say, may the universe always flow with you. Nice.